Hello everybody, today we're going to learn how to make ice cream in Blender 3D. Um, surprisingly enough, this is not such a hard um, a hard tutorial. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's quite quite easy. Uh, let's open up a new file, uh, delete the cube as always, put in orthographical view, turn on um, screen cost keys that for some reason they are not appearing here. Hold on. I'm sorry for that. Wait, there it is. Okay. Save user settings. I'm sorry for this delay. Start display and okay. Uh, so um, the reason I wanted to make this tutorial was mostly because it's 40 degrees here where I live and pretty much everywhere in the world uh, the world is pretty much on fire <laughs> um, and i i decided to learn a bit of of sculpting in blender and this is such an easy thing that you really don't have to learn anything beforehand in terms of sculpting but but we'll get there so what i did i added a sphere uh wait i'm going to delete it and place it again because I want 64 segments here that's great and we're going to use subdivision surface modifier and I'm going to put it in 4 so pretty much this is uh, a very smooth sphere 4 4 is enough and I'm going to apply this modifier so I have this very round very smooth sphere I'm going to rotate it um, uh, in the uh, in the y axis are y ninety degrees because I want um, the the vert these vertices vertices right here um, these points I, I want them along the x axis um, and you'll see why in a minute so we select the sphere we select uh, sculpt mode. I'm going to use this brush F layer. I'm going to start with a 50 pixel radii or radius. I mean, I want, I, I do not want symmetry. I don't want a, a mirror or anything like that. So I deselected that checkbox. And lastly, I want to dig a material. I do not want to add it as as it is right now you, as you can see this is adding material i want to remove material from this sphere and that can be done in stroke nope it's in let me search subtract it's right here exactly uh, it's in add we want subtract like this we are carving a, a hole um, I have a graphics tablet so this is uh, it's a bit more convenient because I can select the weight of the of the brush as you can see on screen right now but you can do this with the mouse as well um, because we are not looking for such such a level of detail that you need to to imperatively imperatively do this with a uh, a, a graphics tablet. So um, with the radius at 50, I'm going to do something along the lines of like some some random strokes like this. And do the same on the other side. Uh, you kind of want to do this uh, semi-randomly. So as you can see, I'm converging these these uh, strokes uh, to the to the y-axis, uh, and if we look at an image of an ice cream, um, these these uh, holes that we're trying to recreate, they all converge at the point. Um, they do not. Uh, um, yeah, they, they all come from the same point, is basically what I'm trying to say. So we do this a couple more times with this brush or and, this, and those settings, and this should be enough. Now I'm going to reduce this, this uh, down to 25, 
and I'm going to continue doing this is too much. I'm going to continue doing the same to just dig at the material and also choose a few different directions. We do not want uh, just horizontal lines. Um, we can have a, a bit of variation like so. And don't worry about those artifacts. This this creates weird artifacts, but uh, this that won't be a problem, as we'll see further down the line. Um, something like this should be enough. I'm going to reduce it even further down to 10. I think I'm going to decrease the strength to 0.4 and continue doing what we've been doing. Like so. Yeah, as I said, this, these past few days have been quite hellish uh, in the place where I live. The weather is really hostile. Uh, you pretty much sweat for absolutely no reason. And you, ha if you go outside, uh, even if you take a bath before you exit your, your house, you you'll find that within 10 steps of your house you're already covered in sweat uh, i'm really not used to this type of weather but but it's okay it's it's what motivated me to to make this tutorial in fact on how to make ice cream which feels especially good with this weather uh, now we're going to choose the smooth tool I'm going to increase the radius to 50 and I'm going to use it to uh, try to uh, diminish these these patterns right here you can you can see these uh, these vertices and uh, the they form a pattern because of the brush we were using and uh, this looks pretty pretty shitty in, in the final render so it's in our interest to try to decrease decrease these these consistent consistent vertices like what i'm doing now as you probably saw in the thumbnail or in the the first few seconds of this tutorial i in that image, I had uh, three three ice cream uh, scoops, three ice cream balls. Um, that was my test render, which I can pull up right here. Um, and these these three balls, I I modeled the three of them uh, independently. But what you can do, especially if your if your plans uh, for this render is to, to render them at a distance or to use a, a focus in just one of the balls or, you know, uh, that depends on, on your idea of your project. What you can do is you can model just one of these and then, uh, I don't know, do a, a rotation along the, the Z axis or something that basically just modifies it a little bit so it's not completely obvious that those balls are exactly the same and your render becomes instantly very irrealistic um, but that saves you i don't know 10 minutes 10 minutes of work but this is really easy and it, it's not as methodical so it's not that boring uh, it's literally just uh, digging away at a uh, at a sphere with lots of with lots of vertices, but it's not that hard. And as I said, don't worry about these artifacts too much. If you can smooth them out, great. Otherwise, th they will probably not matter as much. Especially if you want to, um, as I also have in my my test render, if you want to put a uh, like a topping in the ice cream. Um, those artifacts just won't matter. 
So, uh, this top part, I'm pretty happy with it. This is good enough for what we want. Uh, what I'm going to do before exiting sculpt mode is just to create a bit of randomness. I'm going to use, um, I can use sculpt with a like 75 pixel radius and just create a bit of variation just so that this ball is not completely spherical, which is also very realistic, of course. So we just kind of create this these variations kind of randomly also it's not such a big deal especially if we cover it in a bowl uh, I chose a ceramic bowl in my test render like that I, I did not have to to worry too much about the these parts that just won't be visible in the final render and I would say this is good enough so I'm going to object mode I'm going to press smooth and this is our ice cream ball. Um, next, what we're going to do, let me grab my uh, sheet sheet right here. Right, let's do these chocolate sticks right here. How do we do them? This is also ridiculously easy. Let me go to a new layer. We're going to create a circle, like so, probably a bit smaller. We're going to use a modifier uh, screw. We're going to increase its height. We're going to increase its iterations. And we're going to change the, ex the mirror axis to X. And like so, we have this uh, like candy bar which does a it serves our objective pretty nicely I would say this is good enough the last thing I'm going to do in edit mode is to um, uh, let's apply the modifier um, Wait, I'm confused. Okay, um, let's go to edit mode. Um, this part right here is open. So what I will do is I will extrude this part and circle it inward in both sides here as well. Extrude and close the hole. Great. So this is um, these uh, chocolate uh, sticks I have. Uh, a spoon. Let's model the spoon. Okay. Let me go to a different layer. I'm going to... I want a background image. Add image. Open. I think I have it here. Yes, spoon. Great. Uh, cursor to center and one okay this is our spoon how do well, what's the most efficient way to model this spoon well the way I did it you can do it uh, in a different way of course but the way I, the the way I found it the, the easiest the most efficient was to use a plane rotate it in the uh, X direction by 90 degrees and we're going to basically fall along the lines of the spoon. So like so. Go to edit mode, choose this side. And we're going to extrude like so in order in order to basically mimic the shape of this spoon. You can do this from memory, of course. I just like to follow refer uh, reference images because my memory, <laughs> my graphical memory is pretty wacky most of the times. And even if you model something correctly, if you're using a bad reference image or no reference image at all, that sometimes is enough to make the render uh, feel very irrealistic. So I always like to follow a, a reference image. 
but to each their own. I think I'm cutting this a bit too short. Like so. Again, being too ambitious. Let's do baby steps. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Almost done. And here we go. Now, what we're going to do is basically we have <laughs> we have this. It looks like a spoon, but it's uh, bi-dimensional. It has no depth. Uh, the way I solve it, this is by adding two modifiers. We start with a subdivision surface modifier to make this uh, more round. And then I use a solidify modifier to add depth. Like so, a bit more thick perhaps, but not too much. Just a bit more, I think. And this is good. I'm going to leave it like so. I'm going to uh, jump into edit mode, add uh, another loop, loop cut, like so, because I'm going to use this vertical, uh, this vertical line of vertices to um, round this top part. And you'll see what, what my objective is. So I'm going to use proportional editing I'm going to use, um, well, smooth actually probably is good enough for our objective. I'm going to put in three. I no longer need the image. And I'm going to select this, make it along the y axis, and basically add the round part at the top of the spoon um, just a bit more and I'm going to rotate these two vertices because they look very unnatural Wait. along the x uh, axis like so okay looking good at the top part and then also uh, we could leave it at that but usually spoons also have a uh, have this part here to to fit the hand a more ergonomical uh, design than this so i'm going to use proportional editing again i'm going to do something along the lines of this This is looking a bit weird for now, but we'll fix this eventually. No, no rotation. It just looks too weird. Um, let's like so yeah this is a decent enough looking spoon especially for our objective i'm going to use smooth as well in regard in regards to these uh cream balls right here um the technique i've used was is actually uh, by a tutorial on um, another youtube channel uh, that makes uh, lots of blender related tutorials He's, he's really great. He's uh, Mr. Sorbius. I'm going to uh, link his channel in the description. I highly advise you to, to follow his, his content. He's really good. I've learned a lot of things from, from his tutorials. 
and uh, the way the way he does he does it he he, he uh, presents this in a tutorial he has on uh, how to make a cake a cake a chocolate cake on blender the thing he does he does a um, in this case I'm going to use a 12 sided uh, 12 sided polygon we're going to uh, check or deselect some of these um, uh, wait I, we, we have to go into edit mode <laughs> of course we're going to check or deselect the vertices we're going to take off proportional editing as well and we're going to almost form a like a, a star uh, then we're going to select everything and we're going to extrude it upwards again but we'll close it down a bit we'll then repeat the process another time and then we'll go right to the top like so and we can close the bottom as well then we're going to create uh, we're going to apply the subdivision modifier uh, to this object we're going to go on to edit mode once again select this top part press 7 for the top view we're going to turn on proportional editing again and we are going to rotate this object I think I'm going to increase the radius and this actually is not looking that great I think if I turn off proportional editing increase these two um, these two areas select this part again press 7 again and I think I'm going to rotate it once more rotate like so then we can apply the modifier we press smooth and it's looking like that and this is the pretty much the end of the modeling section we have the ice cream ball we have the chocolate stick we have the spoon and we have the cream uh, object so next materials let's start with the, the ice cream uh, as you probably can tell this ice cream is slightly different than uh, the one I did because my computer crashed uh, and I didn't save so that was not smart but luckily I already had um, uh, uh, no, uh, different versions from uh, from test runs uh, that I did just like the one that I showed you beforehand this this file right here so um, let's let's start with the material of the ice cream uh, we're going to start with a diffuse shader uh, and a glossy shader because um, ice cream still reflects quite a bit of light and we're going to mix it using a of course a mixed shader but with the Fresnel mode attached to the the fuck um, let's make a we can start with like a, a strawberry uh, a strawberry uh, flavor so we're going to go for this pinkish color um, then after this we're going to use a texture coordinate attached to a noise texture to create a bit of uh, of uh, randomness to to the way the light reflects and this will be mixed with with a velvet shader I think it gives a, a very nice look as well um, uh, the, the color of the velvet shader will be the same as the diffuse one and lastly a, another mix shader with a principled shader I've, I'm saying shader a lot uh, and this final part is uh, it exists because uh, we want a, a subsurface uh, we want a, the subsurface effect 
um, as usual uh, when we are dealing with organic materials. Um, let's mix this surface, let's put it in material render part. Uh, let's very fast create a, a white source so that we can analyze this correctly. Something like this. Do emission, emission, emission. Here it is with, I don't know, strength of 40, probably this is good enough. Let's test. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. Okay, uh, back to the ice cream. Um, uh, this base color probably can be this. No, this is too white. Or too dark, I mean. Let's go for a, a whitish color. Like so, let's save. And Shift Z to test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is looking pretty nice. Uh, I like this. I like this quite a lot. Uh, I forgot to mention beforehand, um, but I will. Uh, there will be an annotation. Um, what you should do is, uh, after uh, modeling the ice cream, you should re recalculate the norm normals here, or uh, press uh, Control N while in editing mode, which reminds me my screencast keys were disabled. I'm apologize for that. Oh. Okay, uh, so this is looking quite good for um, for a strawberry uh, flavored ice cream. Uh, if we wanted to do something along the lines of a chocolate flavor, uh, we would pretty much do exactly the same, only changing the color. So that's pretty cool. What you can do if you want to be uh, hyper realistic you can actually uh, explore the colors of different uh, chocolate f uh, flavors and whatnot uh, i'm not going to go into so much uh, detail i'm just going to go for what feels right um, so this like dark darkish uh, darkish brown and i i will call it good enough like so. Let's save once more. Control Z or Shift Z. I mean, yeah, this is this is pretty nice. I I really like this. It really looks like a a melted uh, chocolate uh, flavored ice cream. I like this. Okay, so this was for the ice cream. You can play around with these. Uh, with these uh, properties. This is just my suggestion. You, you do whatever feels right to you. Uh, the spoon, it's just basic uh, silverish, aluminiumish material. Uh, or actually, uh, if we want to be technical, uh, usually spoons are made of stainless steel. Uh, stainless steel is um, ideal for the for um, eating uh, utensils austenitic steel if we want to be really precise okay uh, we can add a bit of glossiness and i have my cups lock on for some reason mix shader boop with a bit of glossiness yeah, this is looking decent enough. Uh, if we will also, if we want to be really realistic, we can use normal maps to add imperfections. But I think that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. The main goal is just to set up a scene with ice cream. It's not necessarily to to do hyper realistic uh, spoons or whatever. Uh, in terms of dried chocolate, dried chocolate is also um, it's slightly easier. Uh, it's not as glossy uh, in principle so what I'm going to do I'm looking at my uh, sheet sheet right here to see what I did before what looks good 
And what I did was I used the diffuse shader with a uh, also a dark brownish color mixed with the glossy and the mix shader. Whoop. Like so. Um, if you want to go for dark chocolate, of course you choose a. Um, you use a, a darkish brown. Otherwise, you do a dark yellow color if you want white chocolate, which I will get to as well. And I always like to use uh, textures, generated textures. We, uh, I, oh, I always like to use generated textures. And in this case, we can use a Veronois texture. I also think it, it looks good. It, it makes it, makes it uh, more interesting, in, in my opinion. The velvet, we're going to use the same. Let's see how this looks. This looks way too, too glossy. Uh, yeah, still too glossy. Um, oh, the velvet did not copy. Yeah, we have to pump up the roughness. And the texture is not looking as great as I hoped. Let's decrease the scale and perhaps decrease the roughness as well. Mm. There's something I I don't like very much. Probably it has to do with the color, but we'll leave it like this. We're going to use the diffuse shader. Diffuse shader with the glossy shader is pretty much all follow the same logic. Mix shader. And you can play around with all of these settings. Depends on what you are going for. And I mix this with the Renoir texture as well. Shader, shader. And lastly, we're going to use um, the principled shader. So we get a bit of subsurface scattering. And this will do it for the materials. Let's just give it a test. Yep, looks pretty nice. Looks uh, looks like cream. <laughs> looks great. Okay, um, let's save and let's set, uh, finish setting up the scene so we can do the final render. So, to make this render just a bit more special, after setting up our scene, is one, to add a topping to a ball, and second, to add sprinkles. So let's start with the first one. Let's select the layer where we have our uh, ice balls. I'm going to hide two of them, and let's add sauce to this first one. What we're going to do, what we're going to have to do, to use fluid simulations, which is much scarier and it sounds much scarier than what it actually is. So we insert um, a cube and our goal with this cube is to basically cover as little of the area as possible. We don't want to uh, put our computer into unnecessary troubles. And this, we're going to click here, choose fluid and choose domain. 
second, we're going to click on our ball, fluid, obstacle, and third, we're going to insert a cylinder, decrease its size, place it above our ice ball, a little bit more to the middle, and this will be fluid, fluid. Then we click on our domain, we can pump up the resolution to 100, which requires quite a bit of memory, so I better save first. And we can click bake, and we will wait a bit, and our computer will calculate how the fluid interacts with our ball, and then we choose a frame, which we will see in just a bit. I'm going to insert a cut here so you don't have to <laughs> watch my computer sweat. So, our fluid simulation has finished rendering, and now we can pick a spot where we find that the fluid looks <laughs> good. Um, for instance, right here, for me, this, this is looking pretty great. So, I press Alt-C, wait, let me turn on the screencast keys once more, Alt-C, and I'll press Mesh from Curve Meta. I'm going to apply a subdivision modifier and I'm going to smooth it out so it's looking quite well. We can now delete the cylinder, we will no longer need it. I'm going to jump into edit mode so we get rid of these uh, few bits and pieces that are just flying about, uh, like that one as well. And that's it. And I'm going to use a material, a, a standard chocolate material. It's basically the same as we've been doing, just a bit more glossy. And that's the topping. Now let's unhide the other two balls. And we're going to you, uh, do the sprinkles. Now, to do the sprinkles, I'm going to once more hide the other two balls that we're not going to mess with and uh, just have one of those. I'm going to go to a different layer. I'm going to create a hexagon. So it's just a circle with six vertices. I'm going to put it here in the middle, decrease its size considerably, and we're going to basically create a very, very r rudimentary sprinkle, like so. Okay. We're going to do a longer one and a shorter one, like so. And uh, I'm going to jump into edit mode. Whoa, what didn't you select? Select everything. I want to do something along these lines. Um, and like so. I'm going to apply the subdivision modifier to both of them and I'm going to smooth both of them as well. I'm going to set their color already. It can also be a standard chocolate color. And I'm going to select both of them and control G so that I can group them and name. I'm going to Red sprinkles. And now we jump ahead to the layer where we have our ice cream ball. We go to edit mode, press Z and A to de deselect things. I'm going to press C so I can select with the brush. And I'm going to basically select the area where I want 
sprinkles on. I do not want sprinkles to be everywhere because obviously with gravity in the bottom part of the ice cream ball they just would fall off. So I just want them in the top part of my my ice cream. So I select all of these vertices like so. I'm going to uh, press ESC to jump out of the selection mode, to press Shift D to copy this selection, press ESC and then P so that I can separate this selection. Now I can go back to object mode and I already have my special uh, special selection right here, the top part of the ice cream ball and I'm going to use particles, a particle system with type hair. I'm going to press on the checkbox for advanced. I'm going to come down to render, select group. The group is sprinkles, obviously. Here they are. I want them to have random sizes, so I'm going to crank this up. Um, yeah, it can be. I'm going to decrease the number of, of particles. This is way too much. I think 250 is already cool enough. Um, I want them randomly distributed. And uh, I think this already looks good enough, to be honest. I don't think we have to do any additional step. It looks a, like a pretty delicious mint flavored ice cream. Uh, I think we can we can increase the number of, of particles. I'm going to crank it up to 400, I think. Yeah, like so. Some of them are kind of oddly placed. I'm going to increase the rotation. I'm going to increase the randomness as well, which is there. But I want to decrease the size. Yeah, this is looking good enough. And we have all of the steps to make a beautiful render. Alt H. We can also place the cream ball on top of the last ice cream ball. So let's go to the camera, place the camera. Uh, what do I want? Oh, I want to walk the camera to view. Something along with these lines. We can also add uh, an empty so that we can have a focus empty point axis we can focus on oh it can be in the pink ball why not right here then we press in the camera we go to the camera focus on the empty with a f stop of one this should this should do it We'll see. Making my computer sweat in these hot days. Yeah, I I like this. It's looking pretty good. Of course, you can do very interesting things with with these techniques. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, 
it's been fun for me. It was a, a challenge, but uh, it was a f fulfilling challenge. And I'm going to upload more of these tutorials in the future. So if you are looking forward to that, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye.